information technologies have brought many benefits, but they've also created concerns about privacy in the workplace. Several federal laws now regulate the collecting and using of information on people and corporations, but the laws are narrow in scope and contain loopholes. There are three important concepts regarding the web and network privacy, acceptable use policies, accountability, and non-repudiation. An acceptable use policy is a set of rules specifying the legal and ethical use of a system and the consequences of non-compliance. Accountability refers to issues involving both the users and the organization's responsibilities and liabilities. Non-repudiation is a method for binding all of the parties to a contract. Although email is widely used, it presents some serious privacy issues. One issue is junk email, also known as spam, unsolicited email sent for advertising purposes. Another privacy concern is ease of access. Whether an email is distributed through the web or through a company network, people should assume that others have access to their messages. The number of people shopping online is increasing rapidly because of the convenience, the array of choices, and lower prices. Privacy issues include the concern that this personal information will be sold to telemarketing firms and customers do not want to be bombarded with spam. This presents interesting issues when it comes to email and online shopping trends. Information that users provide on the web can be combined with other information and technologies to produce new information about a user, a person, an organization, or an entity. Cookies are small text files with unique ID tags that are embedded in a web browser and saved on the user's hard drive. Log files, which are generated by web server software, record a user's actions on a website. Therefore, data collected on the web must be used and interpreted with caution. Some information systems professionals believe that information technology offers many opportunities for unethical behavior, particularly because of the ease of collecting and disseminating information. Cybercrime, cyber fraud, identity theft, and intellectual property theft are on the rise. Nearly 15 million U.S. residents have their identity stolen every year with a total loss of over $50 billion. This means that one identity is stolen every two seconds with an average loss of $3,500.16. No organization controls the whole web, so who decides what content should be put on it? Two types of information are available on the web, public and private. Although U.S. citizens do not want the government controlling web access, many parents are concerned about what their children are exposed to while using the web, such as pornography, violence, and adult language. Intellectual property is the legal umbrella covering protections that involve copyrights, trademarks, trade secrets, and patents for the creation of the mind developed by people or businesses. Generally, copyright laws protect tangible materials such as books, drawings, and so forth. Copyright laws do have some exceptions, however, usually under the Fair Use Doctrine. This exception means that you can use copyrighted material for certain purposes, such as quoting passages of a book and literary reviews. One aspect of intellectual property that has attracted attention recently is cyber squatting, which is registering, selling, or using a domain name to profit from someone else's trademark. Some believe that information technology and the internet have created a digital divide between the information rich and the information poor. Although prices have been decreasing steadily, computers still are not affordable to all people. Children, in particular, are often victims of this digital divide. Those without computers or web access at home, as well as students who cannot afford computer equipment, are at a disadvantage and can often fall behind in their education. Students without access to a wide array of resources on the web have more difficulty writing papers and learning about topics of interest. Telecommuting, also known as virtual work, has enabled some people to perform their jobs from home. 
By handling repetitive and boring tasks, information technologies have made many jobs more interesting, resulting in more worker satisfaction. With information technologies, one skilled worker might be capable of doing the job of several workers. A virtual organization does not need central offices or an organizational hierarchy for participants to contribute their expertise. The increasing popularity of touchscreens on smartphones, tablets, and PCs may result in more stress-related injuries of the user's hands, arms, backs, and eyes. Because these devices can be accessed most anywhere and are used in any number of body positions, users should exercise caution and take frequent breaks. Repetitive typing with thumbs or navigating through various pages and apps is causing another health issues for many smartphone users called smartphone thumb, also called tendonitis. Handheld devices, particularly smartphones, may have serious health and other negative impacts on teenagers. Half of teenagers believe they're addicted to their smartphones. Ergonomics experts believe that using better designed furniture, as well as flexible or wireless keyboards, correct lighting, special monitors for workers with vision problems, and so forth, can solve many of these problems. Researchers estimate that about 6% of the world's population is addicted to the internet, or more than 420 million individuals. Screen computing involves the design, manufacture, use, and disposal of computers, services, and devices with minimal environmental impact. In some states, certain computer manufacturers collect a fee from their customers, called an advanced recovery fee, in order to dispose of computer equipment after its useful life. A successful green computing strategy cannot be fully implement implemented without the cooperation of both the private and the public sector. There are a number of ways to pursue these green computing strategies.